Oh man, it serves me right for being cocky. <laughs> I did that trip in two parts. I brought my pack over and then you could see me going back. And that was to go and get the camera gear bag and obviously the camera that I had left on the other side of the river. And then on the way back, I got a little bit cocky. I thought, oh, this isn't that hard. <laughs> and of course I slipped in. Now I've just noticed a rainbow. So I'm gonna bring you around this way. See if you can see it down there as it meets the trees. I don't know if you can. Gosh, it is so super beautiful here. So, so super beautiful. Uh, I keep second guessing myself. I keep thinking maybe I should go up this valley. It actually looks amazing. But then when a wind gust comes along, I change my mind. So I'm gonna go by my original plan and head up the South Valley. And my pack is the heaviest I have ever carried. And that's because Today I'm testing out the Pomoli Hussa uh, 2 hot tent with wood stove and I am so looking forward to this. It's been a dream of mine forever to uh, sleep in a hot tent and hot tents they're just not that popular in New Zealand and I'll tell you a bit more about that later on why the reason why and why if you are in New Zealand you should think carefully before you do uh, buy one um, but it's always been a dream of mine probably because I haven't been able to do it and don't know anyone who's done it I've always thought oh, it just looks so cool when I watch people from I don't know sort of Europe I suppose and Canada America uh, those seem to be the places where people are using them so yeah that's gonna be super fun but what it means is it's very heavy even though it's a very lightweight hot tent and stove it does add quite a considerable weight to my pack I, I think and I'm gonna have to check and probably put it up on the screen later but I think it's seven kgs for the combination of the tent the liner the poles the pegs and the wood stove which is actually quite amazing I think for what you get okay let's get cracking let's get to camp and let's enjoy this beautiful place so the bag that the Po Molly Hussa comes in is really quite big so what I did is I split it down into two bags plus the wood stove okay so this is what it comes with it's got the stove in here and that all packs down into that um, package there and then these are my own bags and this one I've even tied off to make smaller so this is the main part of the tent and this is the liner that lines out half of the tent I'll show you once it's up one of the things that I would recommend to Pomoli is that they include some bags to make the packages smaller because if you are taking this tent into the mountains the um, the bag that it comes with is too big and what happens is when you've got a big bag and you put a tent into it it just starts to expand to fill the space so you really want something that's um, that it only just fits in or that can compress down I mean even these could compress more I could probably get that about three quarters of the size and probably this three quarters of the size so we've got poles main tent inner pegs are in here and we've got the wood stove there I have set this up once I've only set this up once. I set it up at home in my backyard and I decided actually that I wasn't going to perfect setting it up before I came out because maybe it's nice to have a bit of a realistic idea of what it might be like to set up when you aren't very proficient at it and I certainly am not. I have not ever set up a tent like this other than in my back garden that one time. So um, this is going to be a bit interesting to see how I go. It is the middle of winter here and it was snowing overnight um, just up the valley a little way got a nice good dump of snow up there our car was covered in snow um, and overnight tonight it's supposed to snow sort of wet snow from about 9 p.m through till midnight so it is cold don't be deceived by my few layers i've got um, one two three layers of wool on and um, my down jacket ready to go
<laughs> this is where I'm like, oh, I think the, po the pegs were in here. <laughs> no, I did actually check that I had the pegs, but I think they're actually with the liner because there was more room in the bag. That would be a massive fail, wouldn't it? If I forgot the pegs. Nothing's ever as flat as you think it is. But I'm going to go with this area here and hopefully it's flat enough. You're going to be amazed by how huge this is <laughs> and the fact that I carried it all the way here. So I can see there's a zip over here, so this is going to be one of the doors. And I don't really want the door opening into the bush. I'd rather it was opening out that way. So here's one, and here's the other. So... But the other thing I don't want is I don't want the stove to be coming out right by the trees. So I might actually have to have the door opening that way. Hmm. Okay, the priority is that I don't want the stove near the trees. So let's start with that. And then we'll work out everything else. <laughs> I think this could be a bit of a comedy. We'll start here and see how we get on. So what you've got is these bungees. Now I'm not sure if you're supposed to just pull one like that or two. I'm going for two. Seems safest. So I'm pulling them out so that the tent lays flat. So like the pegs, the pole is pretty serious. Like look at that. Very heavy, very sturdy. But when you see the size of the tent you'll realise why. So you can see this one here pulls like that and then it dips down like that. Whereas this one is going to pull differently. I'm just going to have to not look because it's going to really bug me. I need to get over it. Now this little thing here is the cap that goes on the top to stop rain from getting in. Uh, Uh-oh, should I have put it on before? But I don't know if I'm going to reach. Hey, <laughs> yes, my walking pole. Perfect.
Okay, so the tent is up and it may not look all that pretty, but I think as I use it more and more, I think I'm going to figure it out. For now, I think it's functional. If it rains, it'll be okay. <laughs> I hope. I'm actually quite hoping that it does rain. I'd like to test it out and see. At the moment, the water would come down and pull on this bit here, but then it is actually designed, like these are snow flaps here. It is actually designed to be able to handle snow and rain. Okay, so I've got both doors open. I'll take you inside and show you what the inside is like. I'll see if I can move right to the back so you can get a feel for it. I have managed to pitch the tent <laughs> in such a way that where I'm going to sleep, which is over there, is on the slopiest part, but that's okay. These things happen. So I can stand up inside the tent. Oh, there's the wind. Ooh. There's the wind coming, so we'll get a bit of a wind test. Yeah. So one thing I'm not really sure about is how well this tent's going to cope with the wind. Because there's a lot of surface area. But we'll, we'll see. So one of the reasons I chose this tent is because it has this liner that goes inside of it. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's tons and tons of sand flies flying around and they are so itchy when they bite. They are just so annoying. So you really need a place to sleep that's got mesh. Otherwise you just get eaten alive. I'm a bit nervous about setting this up because it's actually really difficult. This part here, setting up the chimney. I tried it at home with my son's help and it was really, really tricky. So this is what it folds down to. Something feels like it's jamming. I don't just want to push it. I wonder what it is. There we go.
So this is the stove pipe, believe it or not. That is going to extend out to three meters, I think. The edges of this are really sharp, so they send you these gloves. I tried to do this at home, and I just struggled and struggled. And now I'm out in the middle of the bush. <laughs> I don't know why I think it's going to be any easier, but we're going to give it a go. I'm going to have to make it work, because otherwise the stove can't be used. The instructions that came with the tent were not specific enough for me to actually understand what I needed to do. Your best bet is to watch a YouTube video. If someone has specifically done this, and I know there are a couple of them, watch their videos because it's really difficult. And these tiny little things here, as far as I know, are to attach guy lines to the chimney to keep it from blowing around in the wind. And we might need those, so I'm going to attach them now. <laughs> so here's the problem that I've got. end of the pipe is not flat. In fact I've already bent the excess metal in under there and the problem is, so there it is there, see I've got this big piece here and I can't fit it over the top. I just think I have to move this out here a bit. I can't fit it over the top of this bit you're not going to get a good seal around there and then smoke will come out. So I'm not really sure what to do. I can't really bend it. I don't really want to cut it because my knife will get damaged but I think that might be the only option that I've got. <sighs> there must be, obviously it's not supposed to be like that. Obviously I've done it wrong. So maybe if I push this piece up but then, if I do that, it's going to shorten the pipe. I think I just need to push that up and pull that down. There we go. Okay. I'm 
Okay, this might actually work. Hold on. Oh my goodness, this might actually work. Oh, hooray. All right, so if I push that down, that doesn't want to go any further. That's going to hold it really nice and tight on there. Oh, it might actually be working. But a whole lot of these rings have fallen down and I think we're going to have problems higher up on the pipe so I better push them up. Okay, I'm going to go outside and see how it's looking out there and attach the guy lines. Can you imagine if you're setting this up in the pouring rain? There would be no hope that I could do this in the pouring rain. I would just get so frustrated. <laughs> but once again, as I say, maybe when I've done it a few times, it will become easier. Yes, yeah, so they do recommend going this out, but they don't send the guy lines or the, or the pegs. So I've brought these myself I came prepared speaking of rain here comes the rain I can finally take my gloves off it was a long time coming but the tent is up the tent is up stove is set up the chimney is set up neither the tent nor the chimney look very pretty and in time I'll figure out what I've done wrong but for now I think they're functional and that's enough for me I want to get the fire started but before I do that I'm going to go and collect some wood so um, order of business is tidy up this area here, go and collect some firewood and then get the fire started. One of the things that concerns me is that my sleeping area is here and it's raining so the rain is going to come down and inevitably it's going to come across into this area here. So I'm not really sure what to do. I don't want to close the tent up because the whole point of it is to have an area to sit in that's under cover where I can keep warm so that I don't have to carry a tarp. It's sort of as an alternative to a tent and a tarp. It's just the one tent. So all I can think is what I will do is unclip the corner of the sleeping pod and just bring it in while it's raining.
So just in case something catches on, I've got a drink bottle full of water here. And there's actually a little water source just down from where I am. Like, I could be there in 10 seconds. So I'm just going to make sure I've got water handy just in case I burn myself or in case something catches. I think it's very unlikely because it is dry here. I mean, sorry, it is quite wet here. But all the same, seeing as I am on grass, I'm going to pay attention to that. I'm not going to leave the fire unattended. I'm going to make sure I've got water with me. Most importantly, just keep an eye on it. So I did bring my cooker with me today, but I don't think I'm going to need it. I'm going to try cooking on top of the pomoli stove, which means I have my gas canister free and I can light my little lantern. I took a tumble when I was walking here and I fell onto the rocks and as I fell I landed on top of my bag of camera gear and this was also in there because it's very fragile so I was a bit worried something would have broken but so far everything is fine Now this normally gives me a bit of a fright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Cheers. Well, I feel like I can finally relax. The tent is up. I managed to get the stove going. I have a glass of wine. And a really delicious meal to look forward to. I just went with something easy. Got North African shakshuka with tomato and smoked paprika. I don't know if you can see in the photo there, in the image, there's eggs. So what you do is you crack an egg into it as it cooks and the egg poaches as it's cooking. So I've brought with me two eggs and I'm curious to know if they are still whole. I think they are because there's nothing gooey coming off them. Yay! <laughs> when I took a tumble today onto the rocks, I not only landed on my camera gear, but I also rolled onto my pack, the back of my pack and my food bag was hanging off the back. So I thought I might have cracked the eggs. Yay! They're whole. Um, and I've got a Turkish bun to toast up as well. So I might get onto that actually. The pan should be nice and hot. It's been on there for a while. see how the shakshuka is doing oh that looks amazing look the eggs are poached and the spinach has wilted I think it's actually perfect 
Oh, that's amazing. Yay, it worked. I'm so excited. And down there is my over-toasted bun. <laughs> okay, I'm going to close up the fire. And I'm not going to put any more wood on at the moment because it is so hot in here. This is amazing. This is so unlike anything I've done before. It's really fun. Man, that was a faff. Man, that was hard work putting this up. <laughs> Everything is always hard the first time you do it, though, so I know it'll get easier. But I tell you what, it's a lot of hard work to get this set up. So I was saying earlier that um, hot tents are not all that popular in New Zealand. I have watched a couple of videos where hunters have used them for that reason that you can chopper into a place or raft into a place, jet boat or hike if you're game and carry the hot tent in there but then once you're there you can set it up as your base. When you come back from a long day, maybe you're cold, maybe you're wet. You light the fire and you've got cover so it's a great idea for that sort of thing but I think the reason that they're not that popular in New Zealand is actually because of our rules and regulations around lighting fires so if you do live in New Zealand I would think twice about getting one I wouldn't say don't get one but I'd say think carefully about how you'll use it If you've got a family, or there's two of you, and you can split the weight, I think it's great. Or if you want to go in somewhere and stay a while, it'd be fantastic. This is the most amazing dinner. This is so good. If you haven't tried shakshuka, you should. It's really, really nice. I'm going to finish my dinner and then I'm going to put some water on for a hot chocolate and I'll catch up with you guys then. So a little while ago one of you suggested that I should add some liqueur to, to my hot chocolate and I said that I would do that on my next trip and so this is Frangelico which is hazelnut liqueur oh it's lovely I better not drink it all before I put it in my hot chocolate So I'm going to give that a try. So thank you for the recommendation. I've forgotten who it was. Apologies. Oh, yum. That is lovely. Mm. So I do read all the comments. And I actually answer all my comments as well. That's the nice thing about a channel that's small enough. You've actually got the time to answer all the comments so if you want to leave me a comment if you want to say hi if you want to tell me your thoughts on the setup that i've got here leave me a comment down below i know there's going to be a few people who will say <laughs> a few people who are maybe veterans of camping and hot tents who will tell me i've been doing it wrong maybe 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 you've got a little bit of advice for me um i actually welcome it so please let me know if I've done something really stupid or there's something that I can do to make it a little easier, especially rolling that chimney and pegging the tent out so that it's really nice and tight all the way around.
yeah, leave me a comment. Or even if you just want to tell me what you thought of this camp. I'm trying to do some things that are a bit different. And I thought this would be really fun. Now, I have to tell you, to be completely upfront, I did not buy this tent. And I had been looking second hand to buy a hot tent. And then randomly, I got an email from Pomoli asking me whether I'd like to try out one of their products. And when I had a look and realized they were hot tents and stoves, I got really excited. <laughs> and I've only ever tried three companies' products. Like I'm not a gear review channel, but if there is something that I think, oh, that would be really cool, like you guys might like it, I would really like it, something that I want anyway, or that I would actually get genuine use from, then I'm quite happy to give things a go. Hey guys, thank you for coming with me. This channel would not be what it is without you. Thank you so much to everybody who leaves a comment. Thank you so much to everybody who watches these videos. Thank you so much to those people who leave little donations through Super Thanks. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. And um, it means a lot to me that you watch the videos. It means a lot to me that you support the channel. So thank you so much. If you do like this video, please do click the like button. Not because it's good for my ego. I, I actually don't care. I personally don't mind whether people like my videos or not. If you like them, you'll watch them. And if you don't, you won't. And that's just fine. But it is important for YouTube to know that people like the channel and like the video. And then YouTube shows it to more people. So if you do like it, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button. Thanks so much, guys. I'll catch up with you later. Right, that coffee smells incredible. So I need to decide what to do this morning. I can see the sun just coming up onto the hills opposite, but I think it will be a while before it's here because it's um, 
behind the, the mountains on that side. So it's got to get pretty high in the sky in order for the sun to reach this spot. I would like to drive a tent out though before I have to pack it up, otherwise it's going to be really heavy and really disgusting. So one of my ideas is that I pack everything up from the inside of the tent because the, the tent inner and all of my gear and everything is lovely and dry and that's the bonus of this tent. Everything is lovely and dry and I'm so deliciously warm sitting here by the fire. So I might pack everything up and then we can go for a little explore and leave the tent up until the sun is on it and dries it out. Finally, it's just just before where we camped because there's a whole lot of trees here blocking it. It would have been nice to get the sun on the tent before I packed it up because that was quite a mission, getting it into the bag when it was wet. But I'm going to go home and as per usual, everything will come out of my pack and everything will go on the line in the sun. Hey um, guys, thank you so much for coming with. This was a fantastic trip. I really enjoyed it. The walk in with this heavy Pomoli Hassa hot tent and stove was challenging, the setup was challenging, um, I was a little bit nervous having the fire and the whole issue with the chimney but I really enjoyed it, I love trying new things and I love the adventure of giving things a go so I hope that you enjoyed it and I am going to use it again but I don't think it's going to be perfect for me in heavy rain conditions and I do love camping in the rain so it's use for me may be limited but for you you may really enjoy it um, I uh, will definitely give it a go again I'm just trying to think exactly how I might do it um, you guys of course have noticed Indy was not with me today and yet this is an area that actually it's one of the few places you can bring dogs there were a few people yesterday who had dogs in the car park and um, that's because we our family was away on a trip that we couldn't bring her on with a whole lot of other families and I tagged this trip onto the end of that so she's been at home enjoying herself she's been looked after by someone who's taken her out to a farm who's taken her chopping firewood who's taken her to the beach she's had the time of her life and we keep getting little updates with photos so don't worry about Indy she's having a great time and I will make sure that she's with me on the next trip. I look forward to it. Thanks for coming along. Thank you for supporting the channel. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Bye, everybody.